Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you happen to be across the world. Welcome to another live iThemes training live stream. Today, we're talking about WordPress security, and we have an expert in the field with us to talk about the three-dimensional strategy for WordPress security. My name is Nathan Ingram. I'm the host at iThemes training, and I'm joined today by my friend, Thomas Rafe, the founder of We Watch Your Website. Welcome, Thomas. Glad you're here with us today. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity. It's always, sure. fun, it's always fun talking about website security. Uh, without a doubt. <laughs> uh, and I was, I was just thinking, uh, Thomas, I think you and I had our first contact. It's probably been almost 10 years ago now. Uh, yep. I, I reached out to Thomas because in my early WordPress days, probably more than 10 years ago, in my early WordPress days, I made a fundamental error by having <laughs> many, many WordPress installs all in the same cPanel. And one of them got hacked, and I had about 50 hacked websites. I had no idea. I didn't know any better then. Uh, and so I found Thomas, and Thomas came in and saved the day, had me all cleaned up in about 24 hours with all those websites, and we've kept in contact ever since. So, Thomas, really glad you're here with us. Tell us a little bit about We Watch Your Website and what you do there. Yeah, um, I started We Watch Your Website in 2007. Um, it was the result of uh, originally started working on like a, a security box that I would sell to uh, small businesses in the Chicago area where I lived at the, at the time. Um, and uh, the box would prevent small businesses from being hacked. And uh, that led me down this path of uh, uh, deobfuscating, like decoding JavaScript and PHP code that hackers were doing. And I was like, oh, you know what, this is kind of cool. And I think I could automate this process. So off I went. Um, and so like I said, yeah, since 2007, uh, we have removed malware from over five and a half million websites. Wow. Um, yeah. People ask, how is that possible? Well, you know, early on, we had Bluehost and HostMonster, JustHost, HostGator, a whole handful of the big popular ones back then. They were, had told all their tech support people, anybody calls in with a malware issue, send them to Tom. So I was like, ah, so I automated it as much as I could. And, you know, we just kept going from there. Amazing. And today you're watching over 6 million WordPress websites. Yeah, over 6.2 million as of today. And um, so what that involves is um, analyzing the logs, uh, doing file monitoring in real time. Um, any files that are changed or added get analyzed by our system. So. Um, that's, yeah, that's what we're doing today. Gives us a lot of insight as to what the hackers are doing. For sure. All right, so we're talking today specifically about this three-dimensional strategy for WordPress security. Can you kind of give us an overview of where we're headed over the next hour or so? Yeah, basically the, uh, you know, three dimensions, um, it, you know, somebody had mentioned um, in the Q&A at the start there, um, you know, uh, uh, hosting, what's a good hosting provider? Hosting does play, a role um, in WordPress security. We're not going to be talking about specific companies or brands, just you know what what to look for. Um, so hosting is one of the dimensions. Um, user management is another. Uh, you know whether it's uh, passwords, um, who gets access to admin, um, you know two FA, all sorts of you know user oriented um, topics there. Uh, and also uh, want to talk about like, keeping your site itself um, safe and secure, things that you can do to your site um, to help lock it down. So those are really the three dimensions for uh, in this uh, particular presentation. Yeah, excellent. So we have a lot to talk about over the next uh, several minutes together. And I'm just, I'm really happy, Thomas, to have you on uh, with us today. Uh, so you. let me give a, a couple of housekeeping details and we'll turn it over to you. Uh, if you're just joining us in Zoom, welcome. We're glad you're here. Pop open the chat and uh, say hi. Tell us where you are logging in from. We'd love to greet you. Also, uh, in, the, in the chat, you'll find the link bundle, which includes a few things. First, today's slide. So if you'd like to have a copy of the slides you're viewing on the screen, you can download those uh, with that Google Drive link there. Also, with, this is being recorded, and so we'll have a replay of this event ready about a half hour, 45 minutes after we finish today at the link that is there in the link bundle. Uh, that's a public link, and if you want to rewatch yourself or share with someone else, you're welcome to do that. And last of all, iThemes is in the process of becoming solid WP, and so that rebrand in public is happening. 
Uh, so about a month or so, six weeks away, you'll start to see iTheme security becoming solid security. And uh, Backup Buddy will be solid backups. Uh, iTheme Sync will become uh, uh, solid central. And so uh, this rebranding public is happening, and we're excited about that. You can learn more about that at Solid WP or our YouTube channel. Uh, one final thing, this is a live webinar if you're watching with us live now. And uh, we'd encourage you to take advantage of all of the expertise that is in the head of Tom Race. Uh, and so we're, we're going to be talking about a lot of things. But if you have security questions, uh, you're welcome to ask those. And so the best way to do that is not in the chat, but instead in the Zoom Q&A. So if you mouse over the shared screen, a little row of icons will appear. You can click the Q&A icon and that'll open up or uh, that'll open up the Q&A window. And uh, I would just encourage you to keep that open throughout today's webinar. You can uh, ask questions there. Or if you see someone else's question appear that you also have, you can click the thumbs up icon to upvote uh, the, that question. And we'll take those questions in the order of upvotes when we get to the end of the presentation today. So with that, I'm going to disappear. Thomas, take it away. All right. Um, yeah, so primarily today, you know, it, it, besides the, the three dimensions, um, you know, the whole um, gist of this, the whole angle is prevention. Uh, and that's why I used, you know, this quote from Benjamin Franklin, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Because if you can lock down your site as much as possible, um, I know people say, well, if nobody got hacked, you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't have a business. Well, I'm sure I'd be doing something else, but um, regardless, you know, today's world is what it is. So, but you know, this whole thing is going to be centered around uh, prevention. So first I want to talk about like the hackers attack surfaces. Um, you know, there's, we've got six different things laid out here, outdated WordPress, which really isn't as big a thing as it used to be, um, but it is still a thing. Vulnerable plugins, vulnerable themes, uh, you know, keep in mind themes use different libraries. And when those libraries aren't updated, um, it becomes a problem. It could be a point of entry for the hackers. Um, commonly used passwords. Um, and that, that, that opens up a whole can of worms itself. Um, stolen credentials. Um, we're seeing a lot more in the news about info stealers. And when you know, hackers use info stealers, they infect your local device put an info stealer on there and it get, grabs all sorts of information. Um, so that's, that'll fall under stolen credentials. And then we also have cross site credentials, you know, as Nathan had indicated, um, you know, when he and I first met, he had a, a shared hosting account and it had, I, I don't know if it was 50 or not, but it, there was a lot of websites on there. And the problem with that is, is that, all those websites share the same file system. So it means the same permissions. So a hacker gets into one and they can infect all 50. So we'll get into that a little bit more in a minute here. Now, outdated WordPress, as I said, it's rare in today's world, but it does happen. Um, and there's, you know, I frequently when I talk with people, um, uh, agencies and so forth, you know, they say, well, yeah, well, we're, you know, we try and combat that as, as best as possible because, um, you know, we're uh, at least once a week, we, we're on schedule to update everyone's, you know, check for WordPress updates and apply them. You know, a week, you know, I mean, that means if you, if a new update comes out on Monday and you don't up, update until the following Sunday, uh, you know, in today's world, you know, that gives hackers uh, an eternity to find your site and infect it. So, you know, really needs to be something more than, um, you know, just a once a week uh, utility. Um, Plug-in incompat incompatibility. You know, there are a lot of times people say there used to be, um, you know, I don't want to update WordPress automatically because, you know, if it's, if I have plugins that are incompatible, um, you know, it, makes the site all look all wonky. Um, but, you know, same thing with theme and compatibility. The, the problem with that is, is that, you know, you've got, you're going to have two choices. You can have a site that you have to attend to right away because it's, you know, it, it doesn't look right. You know, it's, it's all wonky. Um, 
or you can have an infected website. You know, it, you know, sorry to say, but those are your choices. Um, so you, you need something that's going to help you. Um, a, you have to be notified when um, there's a, a WordPress update, and B, you have to you know take steps. You know, do a backup, update it, check the site, make sure everything's fine, and then move along from there. Um, and you know, I've got number four on here, waiting too long. Sometimes people, they, you know, even that week that some that people do, um, you know, if, as part of their normal maintenance for their clients, uh, that's just waiting too long. And uh, have number five on there. I had to be honest. Um, came across some people even recently you know, that are running like their their WordPress hasn't been the WordPress core hasn't been updated in probably a year and they're wondering how their site got infected like uh you know <laughs> there's only one answer you know you were lazy you waited too long and, you know and or you're lazy so so outdated WordPress is one of the um attack surfaces for for hackers because not everybody is you know on top of things there Vulnerable plugins. Um, this, as they put right up number one, this one has an easy remedy. Keep them updated, but don't wait. Um, you know, things like uh, it's one of the things like with iTheme security, um, integrating, um, you know, their uh, their service that monitors your your plugins, lets you know, hey, there's an update for this one, you know. If you don't update now, you're going to be vulnerable and you know, it's got reminders and so forth. So that's something that's easy to implement now that will take you off the, uh, you know, the low hanging fruit for the hackers attacks. Um, and also under vulnerable plugins, I've got go to the source. I, to be honest with you, uh, out of the, all the sites that, that we've cleaned, um, there's probably only a handful that, that I know have been in, infected through, as, as they call, nulled uh, plugins. You know, somebody makes a, a plugin for, um, you know, and they, they charge for it. Well, somebody else, um, you know, copies that plugin, modifies the code slightly so that it's uh, no longer, you know, paid. You don't have to pay the, the original author and, um, um, you know, they sell it, you know, for a lot less. And the problem with that is they don't keep up, you know, the, the plugin code updated. So it could be, it could make it vulnerable right off the bat. Um, so, you know, I put number five on there. If you find it valuable, just pay for it. You know, don't, don't look for, you know, ways of getting around it. Um, you know, I would encourage you if you hire outside developers, make sure your developers are, are, are following sound practices. You know, if there's a plugin that they think would make your site, you know, number one in, in the category, um, you know, and it's, it's a paid plugin, make sure that you're paying for it. And, you know, the, A, the author deserves it if you find it valuable and B, it's going to, you know, provide you with updates and so forth. And um, as far as vulnerable plugins go, it all depends on the, you know, the time, the timing. Um, you know, we recently worked with, um, Kelvin Aiken from uh, Sneeko on you know, how uh, sites were infected over a 60 day period. And uh, it was nearly 150,000 websites over a 60 day period. Um, and it was because of the Elementor add-on uh, plugin vulnerability. So, you know, right now there isn't any major um, you know, massive plugin vulnerabilities like that one. Um, although if you read the uh, iThemes report that just came out today, I forget the number, I should have had that, sorry. Um, but I think it was like 90 plugins um, have, have vulnerabilities. And again, I, I should look it up, but there's like 60 of them that haven't been updated yet. So, you know, in, in a case like that, you got to jump in you got to take a look at, at this for your customers and say, you know, hey, did you know, is this a must-have plugin? 
If so, you know, should we contact the author? What can we do to to nullify, uh, you know, this this problem until the author uh, creates a uh, an update for it? So, you know, you it, you can't. One thing that's going to hopefully come across today is that WordPress security is not a set it and forget it. Um, you know, part of the, part of the business. So vulnerable themes, uh, as I said before, themes use libraries, like for example, Tim Thumb. You know, some of you who have been in this business for a while know, you know, you probably remember the Tim Thumb. I think it was one of the biggest exploits ever. It was, it was huge. Um, yeah, okay, it did create a lot of business for us, but um, you know, it was a library that was included in a lot of themes and people just never realized it um, until it was too late. So, um, you know, with themes, you know, use child themes so you don't have to worry too much about, you know, breaking a theme if you do update it, but update early, update often. Um, you know, that, that's kind of a play on terms we used to use for voting in Chicago. Vote early, vote often, because there's always voting scandals in Chicago. Anyway, I digress. Um, and it's an easy solution because, you know, you, you, you can, if you use a child theme, keep it updated, um, you know, check at all times for, for any, any updates and any libraries, you know, you really need to be on top of this. And by, you know, if you, if you have the iTheme security plugin, it does a lot of this work for you by keeping you up to date on, Hey, you've got a, an outdated plugin. Hey, this plugin is vulnerable. There is an update for it. You haven't done it yet. You know, so you look at the tools that are available to you and make sure that you use those and implement them. And one of the hackers attack surfaces is commonly used passwords. And number one, same username, same password, different sites. Um, and this is one of the things I really enjoy about iTheme security is the um, refuse compromised passwords um, part of it. So there's a site called Have I Been Pawned? And it's spelled just like that, except pawned is pwned.com. And what that guy has done is he takes, he finds the databases of stolen user accounts that the hackers are selling in the dark market and compiles all that information. So you can go to that site, you can plug in your email address or addresses, and it'll tell you if that email address has been compromised in a data breach with some website, and it'll tell you what website it was. So, I mean, there's a lot of information there, but, you know, the the key part of this is that um you know this is also part of iTheme security it will refuse to let you use a compromised password so because a lot of times what people do is say, okay yeah you know i don't want to remember all these i don't want to use a password manager so i'm just going to use the same password you know with my email address across all my logins that way i only have one to remember problem is as soon as that gets compromised somewhere, hackers add it to their database and they start brute forcing all sorts of sites. And eventually they'll get hits on some and hopefully it's not your bank site. Hopefully it's not a, a you know, WordPress admin login uh, that you have access to because they're gonna, regardless of what it is, they're gonna take advantage of it. So, you know, I frequently tell people to use um, password managers. And um, Kathy Zant, who's on, I believe, on, the, on this webinar here, um, she just did a, uh, a YouTube video on, like, if you use Chrome as your password manager, you have to be careful of the extensions. And that's very critical um, that you're not just downloading and installing you know, 15, 20 different extensions and you have no idea, you know, you never use them. So, but you just, you don't want to have to remove them. So you just leave them on there. Well, those extensions can become vulnerable. And if you're using Chrome as your password manager, um, 
you're going to risk getting getting things stolen. So you could use like, you know, um, one pass, uh, the key pass. There's there's a bunch of password managers. But the I wanted to focus on this for this slide because, like I said, the one part of iTheme security that I really enjoy, really like, is that they, you can refuse compromised passwords. So their, their system checks that database and sees if you're trying to use a password that's already been compromised somewhere. Stolen credentials. This particular one could possibly be the biggest sleeper in the bunch here. Um, so a few keys here. The first one is you have to make sure that everyone gets their own login account, like their own you know, if you're if you're handing out admin accounts to your word to WordPress sites, make sure that everybody has their own account. And, and this probably doesn't have as much to do with prevention as it does cure for this particular part. But too often we see where um, you know somebody doesn't want to create a admin account for everybody. Uh, each developer, you know, you got an SEO guy, maybe you got a graphic designer who needs access to your site. So you just kind of give everybody the same one. Well, if somebody isn't careful on their local computer and that admin account gets stolen by an info stealer, um, then you have no idea whose computer is is vulnerable you know whose computer has been infected and has it you know is getting the credentials stolen if everybody has their own then we can see in the database or you know through iTheme security um, user activity you can see who logged in and and then you can look at the uh, the IP address and if you know that you know Sharon in Tallahassee Florida is uh, normally logging in from down there and all of a sudden you know there's somebody from i don't know siberia i don't know if you even know if siberia has ip addresses maybe i'll have to check on that anyway um so maybe she you know somebody used her account and logged in from siberia now you know that okay something's wrong here you know unless she's doing remote work from siberia um you know it's probably her uh, username and I, uh, password has been compromised. If everybody's using the same one, or you have a bunch of people using the same account, now you don't know if it's her, if it's George in Seattle, if it's you know Fred up in uh, Quebec, Canada. You, you have no idea where they're at. So um, make sure everybody gets their own account. It's a hassle, but just you know make sure you do it. And again with iThemes. Um, you can set it so that it'll remind you to delete that account. So the, the account will actually expire after a certain amount. So if you, you know, give it to some developer, you know, George in Seattle, um, and you only, you know, he's only going to need it for like two weeks, set it for a two week expiration, and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, and all this has to do with the fact that info stealers are on the rise. You know, hackers are stealing everything. You know, and some people say, "Well, you know, what I do is I I hide the uh, the user login. You know, the WP admin or WP login.php. I hide it so it's something different, and they'll never guess that." Well, here's the problem with that. I mean, it's it's good to have layers of defense, but the problem with that as it's as the sole strategy is that. Typically, these info stealers are, they're more than just a keyboard logger. Like they actually know what site you're using those stolen, you know, those credentials on. So it gives them the URL, the username, and the password, and it sends it to them. And we can tell from activity logs, um, it takes them about six to eight seconds once they steal. Um, uh, credentials so it sends it to the the hacker servers their servers are set up to just automatically use those credentials and that login url log in create a bogus admin account 
and maybe drop some backdoor shell scripts on, on the site and then move on to the, you know, record it and then move on to the next site. I mean, that's how automated the hackers are. And it takes, like I said, it's normally about six to eight seconds from what, you know, the best we can, uh, you know, analyze the information. It takes them about six to eight seconds from the time it's stolen until the time it's used. Um, and also you know, people logging in on an open Wi-Fi. you know, you go to your coffee shop and I used to do this years ago when I lived up in Chicago, I'd, you know, talk to the local coffee shop and like, Hey, you know, I do, I do security. Um, you know, can we do a little demo here in your, in your store? I'd set up a fake, you know, Wi-Fi access point, name it the, the store name. And, but I knew that I had like a stronger beacon than they did. So people would log into mine and, you know, I could show them on my screen, everything that they're looking at, you know, and a lot of times I could on the inbound, like stuff to their browser, I could change words. So I set it up so that I could search for every time um, the, the word Cubs lost, Cubs lose, and I could change it to, you know, Cubs win. And so everybody in the store there that was connected to, to my Wi-Fi access point, when they'd go to, to see the Cubs score and say, oh, Cubs win, when in fact they didn't. So, you know, that, that's how much control a hacker can have. Now, yes, that, that's a whole different, um, uh, you know, a, a scenario because the hack would have to be locally, have to be local. But there are people who steal those uh, login credentials through open Wi-Fi and then sell them to the hackers on the black market. So, you, you, you know, Stolen credentials is is huge. Um, 2FA helps with that, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But 2FA helps, but it's not the end-all be-all for this. The, the big thing is you have to keep your uh, local computers, all local computers, with the contractor, employee, whoever, they have to be safe. And then we get into cross-site credentials. Um, number one, I just put on there, shared hosting equals potential disaster. Um, as Nathan said, that's how he and I met years ago. He had a shared hosting account and one, one site got infected. It's all the same you know, system user for all 50 accounts. So, um, you know, they hackers get in on one and you know, they have, they have access to everything on that account. And what we used to see a lot was uh, hackers would play games. And I'm sure it wasn't just us, but uh, I like I like playing their games for a while. So they would come in, let's say if there's uh, 50 uh, websites, they would come in on, let's say, website number 10, and they would infect that. Now, they have access to all 50 but they just say they, they found a, an opening on 10. Now all of a sudden they realize, hey, we have access to 50 sites. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna uh, infect the uh, uh, sites 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And so they infect those. So, you know, somebody like us, you know, we're scurrying, you know, to try and get those, those sites cleaned. And then they, they reinfect them again as soon as we get it, you know, as soon as we get them cleaned again, because we never found their original point of entry. And it just goes on and on like that. And then they're like, okay, you know what? Now we're going to mess them up. Now we're going to do all uh, odd numbered, um, you know, in increments of five. So like five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, whatever. Uh, we're going to infect those sites. And, you know, they just keep going back and forth. So you, on a shared hosting account, you have to make sure every site is buttoned down. Every site it has, you know, good user management on there because, you know, the, so if like the first 10 sites, you've got, you know, this George in Seattle um, as the uh, developer on there. And then for 10 through 20, you've got uh, the lady down in Tallahassee. Um, you know, you have to make sure that everyone involved is, is locked down as tight as possible because on a shared hosting account, you, it's, you really have no control um and we're actually considering um like not offering it 
on shared hosting account, you know, offering our service anymore on shared hosting accounts because it is so doggone difficult. Um, so, you know, typically, you know, what's the, uh, you know, the solution to this part um, is each hosting account should have its own file system user. So, like in the cPanel world, um, you know, if you're if, you, if you're into that, um, you know, a WHM, so that you've got, uh, you know, like a, a VPS or um, a reseller account where every site would have its own cPanel user. That way, is it more expensive? Sure, but you're safer too, because that way. Hack, if hackers get into one of your sites, that's the only site they have access to, unless, again, you're using the same username and password across all of your cPanel accounts, then, you know, then we go back a few slides and you can read that over again. But, you know, everybody has to have um, their own uh, file system space. So that that's the best way to protect it. Um, and that's, you know, whether you've got your own um, cloud server, you know, through DigitalOcean, Linode, Volter, whoever, um, you know, it doesn't matter, but you have to make sure that every website has its own file system. So some solutions here. Um, I put this, this one number one, because a lot of people in my industry um, feel this, that blocking user agents is a waste of time um, because you can, you know, I don't, I don't know how many of you people, you know, each browser, each version, et cetera, has its own user agent string that's um, recorded by the access logs. Um, and the, being the fact that, you know, we, we ingest so many um, access logs every second every every day um you know we see the uh, the user agents coming from um uh, not nice ip addresses and blocking user agent is is an extremely effective way of blocking bots um like for instance today i was i was while i was going over these slides to prepare for today i was looking at at some uh, logs and every uh, out of um, 100,000 logs that I was analyzing um, at, the, at the moment, um, no, it was 97% of the ones that came from bad IP addresses also had a user agent string that could have easily been blocked. Now, when I, when I refer to the user agent string, you know, there, in, in a user agent string, I believe the current version of Chrome right now is 115. So if you've got a user agent string that has Chrome version 54, no, um, I'm sorry, but if I have a user coming to my site and they're using a browser that's that outdated, am I gonna mind blocking them? Probably not because you know, are they are they going to be a good customer? Are they going to be a good visitor to my site? You know, being the fact that they're you know so outdated on their browser, uh, you know, it just doesn't make sense. So, um, you can block by by user agent, and it is extremely effective. Um, as I mentioned earlier, two factor authentication is a great. Um, step to take uh, and you can do that through iTheme security um, because it 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 it, it adds an, another layer of complexity to the login part now some people say oh it's a pain in the in the rear end well that's fine so is you know having a hacker log into your site with an admin you know that that's been compromised and messing your site up really bad so you know, you got to choose your poisons there, but two-factor authentication is a good step in layering your cyber defenses. Um, as we, as I talked about earlier, 
um, privilege escalation with the expiration date. So you can give somebody admin rights uh, to your site, but make sure that through the iThemes security um, system, you set an expiration date on there as well. Um, user logging, you know, what do your, what do the users do when they log in? What are they doing? Um, we just had a, a situation where hackers had stolen um, a uh, admin credentials you know, from a dev's uh, local computer and they were logging in, they would upload a plugin because we could see it in the logs. They were uploading a plugin, running it, and then they would delete the plugin. So, you know, you go to look for the plugin, you're like, it's not even there. Um, but yet you can see in the, uh, in the logs that, you know, somebody had uploaded it, activated it, accessed it, and then deleted it. So, and without, so without user logging, again, a nice feature of iThemes, um, without the logging, you know, you're, you're just guessing how they're gotten in because there's no evidence. And I have last on here, protect your endpoints. Um, there's, you know, you, you have to make sure that all your devs, anybody who's logging into your, your site with admin rights um, has good, strong antivirus on their local computer, even Macs. I know, I know I'm getting lots of eye rolls right now from people like, oh, no, 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 Macs are safe. I've had a Mac for years and it's never been infected. Well, you know, it's like, you know, people who have carbon monoxide in their house, like, oh, I never knew. Well, do you have any carbon monoxide detectors? No. Then how would you know? So if you don't have anything to detect a virus, how do you know you don't have a virus? Um, you can say, well, you know, my system isn't doing anything funny. Now, years ago, years and years ago, you know, used to be hackers would do stuff like open your, your CD tray, you know, on your computer, just to let you know that, you know, if they were in and, you know, they were just messing with you, but hackers don't do that anymore. They want to lay low. So everybody needs good antivirus um, for Mac. Um, a, a good one is like Sophos, S-O-P-H-O-S. They have a free um, version for Mac users. Uh, you have, there's some compatibility issues with it. It has to be like a, a certain version of the Mac OS or iOS OS. Anyway, um, but you know, you know, get something and, and run it. You know, make sure that it's running well because the way that these antivirus programs work is um let's say you, you just ran a, a full scan and it's wednesday now tomorrow hackers release a new virus so uh, just for the sake of argument let's say the the antivirus companies pick it up on friday so they create a signature boom they push that signature out to all their users. So from Friday forward, you're protected from that new virus. If you already have the virus on your computer, it's not going to be detected until you run another full scan. So that's why it's critically important that you run daily full system scans of your local devices. And I saw it might have been in um, Kyle's group. Uh, uh, tab, somebody was asking about, you know, or putting together like a scenario where they would have all their, he would have all his people uh, do a virus scan like every day and then upload the screenshot of it or something like that. Um, and there's some, there are some solutions there. Uh, some we've, I've been looking at um, endorsing or, you know, recommending, supporting, um, but not quite there yet. But um, and I'm not looking for an affiliate link. I'm just, I, I, you know, if I'm going to recommend something, I want to make sure that it's, it's good product that I can um, vouch for. Um, so anyway, make sure that everybody's running a full system scan. And sometimes people tell me, oh, it takes forever. 
you know, set it up to run at the end of the day or something, you know, I don't know, lunchtime, pick a time. Yeah, it's going to take some time, but, you know, cleaning out a, a hacked website takes time too. So again, pick your poisons. So you may be, some of you know who I am, um, but, and I want to open this up to, uh, for questions and answers. I'm sure, hopefully there's a lot of questions. Um, I started focusing on website security in 2007. Um, and real quick story. Some of you have heard this already. Um, at that point, I was blogging like every day about new infections that, that I was seeing. And uh, so one day I get a phone call from a guy and he's like, hey, I'm very technical. I saw this blog post you wrote yesterday. My boss's personal blog just got hit. Sounds like from the same thing. What can you tell me about it? I need to help him. So I'm like, all right. So I spent I don't know, a good hour or so on the phone with the guy and he, uh, you know, we finish up and he's like, all right, thanks. You know, appreciate, appreciate the help. Next day he calls back and he's like, Hey, that just want to let you know that information you gave me was spot on. Help my, you know, my boss's, uh, WordPress site. And we, we got everything cleaned up. He goes, yeah, that was awesome. And he says, I see that you host with us. I'm like, who are you? He's like, I'm Alex Lundquist. I'm a level three tech here at Bluehost. My boss is Matt Heaton, the founder. How'd you like if we started sending you some business? So, you know, that's what got me really, you know, was my springboard. Um, and uh, it just kind of went on from there. Now, you know, Bluehost eventually was acquired by a large conglomerate who also happened to be connected to a competitor. So we got kicked out, but that momentum stayed with us. Um, and we have, so we have removed malware from over five and a half million websites. Um, and uh, some people say, well, that would be so many blah, 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 a day times 365. You know, I don't care what the math is. I just know how many we've done. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, we actively monitor 6.2 million websites. Um, monitor, you know, we're, we're looking at file changes, any files that have been added um, or modified. And we're also grabbing their access logs and a few other, sometimes uh, we also grab the uh, error logs just so we can see what hackers are trying and failing miserably at. Um, and our system ingests, again, I get pushback on this some, sometimes too, but I don't care. Facts are facts. Our system ingests 20 million log entries per second. Per second. So that's a lot of access logs. Uh, we're analyzing this information in as near real time as is humanly or computer computingly possible. Uh, but that boils down to 1.728 trillion log entries per day that are analyzed. So we see trends. Um, you know, we see a lot of things that now I'm not saying that, um, you know, we have 6.2 million websites that are on our paid plan, you know, that's, as some people have said, well, then you should just buy an island somewhere. But um, I have no interest in buying an island. The internet connectivity is probably terrible. But um, we also have our, our freemium plan, um, which you know we put, we'll we'll monitor your your server, um, your web server, um, but we don't tell you, you know, if, if you have a website that's attacking other websites, we'll tell you, hey, this website is attacking other websites, um, but uh, we're not going to tell you where the infection is, what files have changed. We're just going to tell you that, yeah, that site's that site's infected. And you need to either restore from backup or go on our paid plan so that we can remediate it for you. Let me jump in here, Tom, uh, just to mention everybody in the chat. I've dropped in a little bit more information about we watch your website and their pricing page. Uh, a couple of different or th three different options there. And uh, I would strongly recommend you check this out, especially if you are managing a server on which you have uh, many client websites. There's a, an annual plan that protects all the sites on the server for a flat cost. And uh, 
So good information there at wewatchyourwebsite.com. And I'd strongly recommend that you take a look at that and uh, let Tom and his team uh, go to work for you and not have to worry about the, um, the, the file level issues. Uh, so Tom, we have a bunch of questions stacked up here <laughs> and uh, let me, let me just right. invite everybody. If you don't, if you haven't already opened up the Zoom Q and A, uh, do that and just kind of scan down that list of questions and press the thumbs up icon for any questions that you would like to have the answers to. And we'll start to uh, go through those questions now. Again, make sure you take a look there at wewatchyourwebsite.com. I can't recommend Tom and his team more. Thank you, Nathan. All right. So first question is from an anonymous attendee. Uh, just oh. a question about that freemium plan. Uh, it's, does it use different tools than iTheme Security does? Could you use both together? Um, yes and yes. Uh, we do. Um, that's one of the things why, I, one of the reasons why I've always liked iThemes is that um, they don't conflict with us. We don't conflict with them. Um, they offer things at the application level um, that we don't. You know, we we're look at, you know, we're looking at protecting the server or the, the hosting account from a, a different angle from, you know, using different methods. So yeah, it really is um, a nice harmonious way of, of protecting your site is using both services. Yeah, and that's that kind of folds right into the structure of the talk today. The, the three dimensions of WordPress security being the server level, WordPress application level, and WordPress user level. Um, you know, the, the We Watch Your Website works really great at the server level, and it's it's watching all the actual files. Whereas I think security in the patch stack scan is looking at your installed themes and plugins and doing things like, you know, if, if a theme or plugin is vulnerable, it'll let you know. Even if you haven't been hacked, I think security will let you know that that's a vulnerable theme and plugin. And in the pro version, uh, if the, the patch is available, it will actually immediately uh, aut in an automated way patch that theme or plugin for you as it scans your site, uh, your site twice a day. So it, they work really well hand in hand. I think security also does great user security. Uh, including uh, integrating pass keys. Let me just drop this link in the chat. Oh, yes. Uh, there is an upcoming webinar with Timothy Jacobs, the lead developer for Solid, uh, Solid WP. We'll be talking about the pass key implementation with uh, Solid Security, I think security. Uh, we were the first WordPress plugin to integrate that, and it works really, really well. So uh, take a look at that. That's upcoming uh, next week, next Tuesday at the same time. Uh, moving on to our next question here from Milan. The saying goes uh, that security should be at the server level, not inside WordPress. What do you think about that? Um, I believe in this defense in depth, which means you need to approach it from every level. Um, I chose to go at the at the server level because that's my comfort area. You know, I'm a server guy from way back. Um, so I, I chose to go that route but you do also need it at the application level um, where it's doing things like you know, user logging and um, you know adding additional layers of protection at that level you know from a server level we can see what plugins there are and people have often asked me well, why don't you just think you know write your own stuff that works like patch stack well because patch stack and the iThemes integration works so well, you know, why, why bother, you know, just, just use those tools and I don't have to worry about it. You know, we do what we're, we're good at, let others do what they're good at. And we all live harmoniously. Absolutely. Yeah. And again, the, the, the way iThemes security implements security goes hand in hand with the server level security that we watch your website offers. It's, it's a great, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great team. I think so. A uh, couple of questions here from Elizabeth. Uh, Elizabeth has a, uh, a bunch of sites hosted on Nexus, which is another one of our liquid web companies that does managed WordPress. Uh, and she's wondering if, the, uh, if they share the same file system. And Elizabeth, I'll just jump in and say, uh, in most managed WordPress, you'll want to make sure with the actual provider. But I can tell you for sure that Nexus, they're separate. Uh, it's, it's as though they are in separate uh, walled gardens of their own. Uh, some managed WordPress hosts may not do it that way. So if you're not with Nexus, you may want to just talk to your host and make sure of that. But in your specific question, Nexus, they do have separate file systems. Yeah. Uh, Beth's question here. I have a potential client whose website is flagged as having malware by the Malwarebytes app. 
Uh, other malware tools tested uh, don't show a problem on the website. Is it a false positive? How do you deal with that? You know, what are your what's your advice about that? Um, malware bytes does from time to time have false positives. What I would do is go to a site called virustotal.com. Um, that'll check that web. You could plug in. There's a you'd have to pick the uh, URL um, option on the front of their screen there and plug in the URL and let it go at it. It'll check that website against 90 different um, antivirus companies. Interesting. That is and, a great resource. Yeah. And it, I think I'm pretty sure Google bought them I don't know, a couple of years ago, virus total. So, but yeah, it's, it's a great resource. Um, it, again, it won't tell you where it's infected. It'll just tell you that, yeah, you know, these sites or these, uh, um, antivirus companies have detected something malicious on there. Um, Interesting. Other than that, you know, ping me, you know, outside of here, you've got my email address there. Um, and I'll scan, I'll scan the files for free. Just to let you know, you know, do, is there an infection or not? Good deal. Uh, yeah, thanks for that resource. That's a good one. Uh, okay, question from Stacy. And Stacy, I'm having a little trouble deciphering what you're asking here, so I'm going to take my best shot at it. Um, Stacy has a client who logs into the admin, the WordPress admin panel from the uh, hosting account. So th in this hosting account, there's like a quick link to log into WordPress admin, right? Right. Um, he apparently, because her admin account was set up first, that's the account that the it's like the quick link to log in is that a risk um no other than the fact that you know again going back to these info stealers info stealers we see a lot of uh hosting accounts uh in cpanel there's a, a file in the root of every um cpanel account called it's a period last login and so it records, uh, I think it's the last 20 logins into that cPanel account. Um, and if you open that file, you can, I mean, you just read it like a text file. It'll give you the date and the IP address. So, you know, we, we've seen a number of times where hackers have stolen the username and password to the hosting account. And at that point, yeah, then they have access to you know, logging in as an admin, all sorts of, you know, bad things from there. Um, so if Stacy's asking, like if she, you know, her sharing that first account is a bad thing, I would say yes. I, and I would encourage her to um, create a, a separate account that only she will use and not have it be the one that's used from the, the hosting account. Does yeah, that make it, sense? Yeah, it, it sounds like, Stacy, that this situation is like, I would encourage the client not to log into WordPress through the web host, because at that point, you've got like the world revolves around that web hosting credential, right? So if that right. gets exploited somehow, now they got your host, they got your WordPress, they got all the things. Database. So just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, probably a client shouldn't be logging, a typical client shouldn't be logging in with a WordPress admin um, account anyway. So I would you know, make it easier for him to log in at the WordPress level, but yeah. Yeah. And your, um, I themes has the, um, the magic link, right? Yeah. Passwordless login would be great yeah. for this situation. Right. Um, yeah. All right. Move. We have a ton of questions here. Moving okay. to the next one from uh, Milan. Does a VPN give you a security advantage when logging into your site? Is it good to use a VPN? No. <laughs> next question. No, um, I don't believe, um, I, I, I never have believed in VPNs, basically what it's given you. And, you know, if you're infected, it also gives the hacker a, uh, an encrypted channel right to whatever you're logging into. You know, it doesn't, it, it doesn't block out the fact that, you know, you're, you're still, you still got to use credentials to, to log in. Um, and, the, the problem is, is that uh, if they're stealing, if they've infected your local computer, you know, it all comes back to that. If they're, if they've infected your local computer, they have keys to the kingdom. So they could actually log in 
through your VPN from your computer and you'd never know. Exactly. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I've never been a big fan of VPNs. I understand a lot of people want them and use them mostly to hide their IP address, but um, nah, it's, I, I, I just don't believe in them. I'm sorry. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay. So John has a question about protecting small business owners from these info stealers. And I actually shared a link that is completely terrifying that we shared the story on our news roundup here last month about this new attack, this new attack, it's an acoustic attack that uh, people can actually listen to the sound of your keyboard and with 95% accuracy reproduce what you typed. Uh, that's just terrifying, right? So <laughs> what would you say, you know, and again, we could do a whole live stream on just this. But if you had to wrap up a good piece of advice for small business owners about being protected from info stealers, what would you say? I, again, have a, have a really, really good um, antivirus program. And I'll, I'll take it one step further. If you're on a Windows system, um, it's easy to combine two different um, antivirus programs. So um, my my typical go-tos are the free version of Malwarebytes, and you can pick like um, Avira, um, Avast, AVG, um, Bitdefender, um, but any of those will play nicely with the free version of malware bytes. So typically, and that's that's what I run on, on my Windows boxes is like Bitdefender and malware bytes, uh, because what one doesn't catch, the other one's probably going to get. But on a Mac, it's it's different because the Mac doesn't like sharing responsibilities like like uh, virus protection. So it's a, it's, it's a lot more difficult to do on a Mac, but uh, on a Windows box, you know, make sure that they've got good, strong um, antivirus. And I would also go so far because phishing attacks are becoming much more sophisticated that whatever they're using for email is, you know, if it's uh, uh, Google or, you know, um, 365 by Microsoft, um, that they somebody look into um, amping up their their phishing detection because hackers will uh, they're very smart they're very good at what they do their life depends on it so um, they're going to try every trick in the book and phishing is one of the big ones for sure all right we have a couple of questions about user agents that are stacked up first stacy i've just dropped a link in the chat from the iThemes help center uh, on how you can use iThemes security to uh, block various user agents. So there's a link there that'll answer your question. And Sarah has a question, Tom, just if you could give a simple definition of what is a user agent. Um, a user agent is a string that is sent um, from, the, uh, from the browser to the website, identifying what, uh, what browser you're using, um, what operating system, you know, are you a Windows? Are you a Mac person? Um, and you know, you can uh, you can you can Google user agent strings, you know, to make it easy. And uh, um, you know, you'll see a whole a whole list of them. You know, the first one that comes up here is uh, yeah, desktop user agents. Now, can I drop this in the chat? Uh, you can type in the chat. I don't think it'll let you drop a file or you could put a link in there. Like what? Let's see here. Sorry. There, there's there's a user agent. Can you see that? Uh, you. There we go. I just dropped it out to everyone. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, so that's saying it's a it's that's basically Firefox, right? It's Mozilla Five, um, it, it a, or a bunch of different user agents. Yeah. Yeah, but so, you see, this one identifies it as Chrome Forty Two. Yeah. So that's an out way outdated version of Chrome. So yeah, it's essentially it's the the software or app through which someone is visiting a website. Right. Uh, all right, Sarah, hopefully that helps you. Uh, let's see, Beth has a question here. How would you say, Tom, that managed WordPress 
like Cloudways is different than shared or VPN or dedicated server in terms of security? Um, probably she probably doesn't mean VPN, probably VPS. Uh, VPS, yeah, that okay. I may have mispronounced. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it, if, if she's mentioning Cloudways in particular or, you know, people like Cloudways, Gridpane, Cyber Panel, Run Cloud, you know, take your pick. Um, they try and do, I shouldn't say try, that sounds bad. They work to provide um, a certain standard level of security to protect your website. Um, if you're getting your own VPS or dedicated server, like from DigitalOcean or Vulture, you know, you can install uh, WordPress on there. You can install the MariaDB or MySQL you know, database. You can set up everything yourself, but all the basic standard stuff is left up to you to, to protect. Um, so like disabling PHP in the uploads folder, uh, you know, various things like that. A lot of the, the common best practices are, are gonna be left up to you. So, um, you know, unless you're really strong at the server level, I would suggest that you look at, um, you know, some, some service uh, like the aforementioned and uh, stay away from, you know, doing the server stuff yourself. Yeah, good. Uh, all right, we need to start wrapping things up here. I'm gonna, there's a couple more questions I'm gonna pick from the list. We're not gonna be able to get to all these questions, folks. I apologize for that. If you're a member, I'm back, of course, for office hours tomorrow and happy to get into some of these questions. Uh, but uh, Tom, there's a couple of questions here just in com comparing We Watch Your Website to other services like Securi uh, or Immunify 360. How would you say what you're doing is different than those folks? Um. <sighs> Um, okay, I'll, I'll take uh, Immunify 360 first. Um, they install a lot um, on your server. So they're using server resources um, to, uh, you know, to analyze things, collect data, things like that. We put very minimal um, stuff on your server. Uh, and basically, you know, we're only using standard Linux programs. We just configure them our way uh, to get us the information we need. And then we grab, uh, you know, a case in point, some of the recent um, malware we've been seeing the back doors um, has is heavily, heavily commented with junk, um, you know, non-standard characters in the, in the comments, um, comments placed you know, in between variable names. And I mean, it's just, it, it's a, it's a mess. And that itself has been, that particular one has been flying by um, so far, every malware scanner that we've, we've tested it against. Um, because just when you think you've got a pattern for it, it's, it's different on the next version. Um, so in order to, to analyze a file like that, You've got to consume server resources, which I refuse to do. So, we'll if we detect a, a file has been added or, or changed on your site. We grab that file, analyze it on our servers, and uh, then we can make a you know 100 percent decision, you know, negative or positive, is it malicious or not, and then we take steps from there. So that's one of the big um, differences. Um, you know, Munify. I know I've known Igor. Igor for, for years. Um, in fact, we were on a C panel conference together down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, but um, you know, we have mutual respect. So, you know, the, the strategic differences, um, he, he, he does malware scanning differently than we do. You know, like I said, we do it offline. They do it right there on the server. Um, the way he goes about protecting things, you know, my big thing is blocking bots. Um, and that, that can be done effectively with um, the IP addresses that we block and the uh, user agents. So, um, but we don't, you know, we have a lot of customers who use, use both. So one doesn't, you know, block the other by any stretch. Yeah. Well, thanks, Tom, so much for your time today, for your expertise, for answering a bunch of these questions. 
Uh, if they want to reach out to you, they're uh, talk to you just one more uh, one more explanation of how they can get in touch with you and how you can help them. Yeah, you can email me at trafe, T-R-A-E-F, at wewatchyourwebsite.com. And just, just so everybody knows, um, my last name, Rafe, is fear spelled backwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, well, folks, I can personally recommend Tom and his service. If you email that address, you will get him. And uh, he does a great job at watching your website. So, uh, Tom, thanks once again. Folks, we'll have this replay up in about uh, half hour, 45 minutes from now. If you want to go back and rewatch any of this or share with someone else uh, the URL, let me just drop that one more time in the chat. Uh, the link is the second one there uh, for the replay. So, Tom, thanks again. Thank you all for being with us as well. We'll see you back here tomorrow for members for Office Hours with me here on iThemes Training, where we go further together.